Hi everyone, my name is Corinne Kelly and I'm an educational consultant at SOIDA in Dayton, Ohio. And today we're gonna to be talking about interactive timelines with Timeline JS, which is from Night Lab. I'm gonna go ahead and give you my contact information. If you have any questions following this presentation, please feel free to reach out via email. My email is just Corinne, C-A-R-Y-N at soida.org. And I'm also going to give you a link to this presentation in case you just wanted to access those links or didn't have the, uh, the time or the uh, ability to write this down right now, okay? So that's just gonna be Corinne at soida.org to contact me after this session. And this is gonna be the link for this little slide deck. A lot of this information you're gonna also be able to find on Timeline JS's website, um, but I just kind of gathered everything I thought you might need together for quick access for this particular session. So it's just gonna be bit.ly slash soida time for this presentation. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna be using Timeline JS, which is again from Night Lab. I have the URL right here, timeline.nightlab.com. And we're gonna be talking about how to make some really beautiful, really professional looking timelines today. Um, timelines are a great project. We've all probably done it in school. And if you teach social studies like I used to, you also have probably done it with kids. And there's a lot of different ways to do it. And over the years, there've been a lot of different online tools to do it with as well. This is probably one of my favorites um, of all time. And the reason for that is that it really consistently produces a very professional, dynamic, clean looking result. Um, and also it's using some tools and resources that your kids are already gonna have access to. They're not gonna need an account or anything like that for Timeline JS. We're just gonna be using actually a Google Sheet for this. So this is also an avenue. If you haven't worked with spreadsheets with your kids before and you would like to, this is a great way to kind of dip your toes into that because all we're essentially gonna be doing is entering information into that spreadsheet and publishing it to the web and then gathering that link. So it's not gonna be super spreadsheet heavy, but we are gonna be working in that spreadsheet today, okay? This is where you're gonna to wanna to go though to access some of the things I'm referencing in our presentation. So I'm gonna walk through the basic steps that we're going to go through. Again, this is all also available on Timeline JS's website and they also have a walkthrough video um, if you wanted to watch an additional uh, walkthrough on how to do this, okay? So eight steps. So not, you know, too small, <laughs> too small of a step-by-step -step guide, but not horrible, right? So step one, you're gonna be using the Timeline JS Google Sheets template, which we will check out here in a bit. And that's what's really great is we're not starting from scratch here. In fact, they even have some um, data already in there so you can see how it needs to be set up. So we are gonna be using their template today. Um, the next thing you or your kids are gonna to wanna to do is identify the events to include. Just because of um, how you go about putting things in here, in my mind, for my personal workflow, I prefer to gather everything ahead of time, get everything organized, which is probably gonna be another tip, right? And then dive into that template. Now, you may look at this and say, hey, this is great. I can go research, go put it in the template, go research some more, go put it in a template. If that works for you, obviously you can do that. For me, I like to gather everything ahead of time and put it all in, okay? All in at once, I should say, okay? So the next thing I'm going to talk about is that organization. So collecting and organizing images in a Google Drive folder. So we are using Google Sheets. It makes complete sense to be using Google Drive to organize our content. Um, I just grabbed uh, some um, events online, so it wasn't really uh, in-depth research for our example today, but I did put it all in order in a Google Doc, which I think is a great idea. You could also have your kids keep it, track of it in a spreadsheet if you wanted to. Um, but I put everything in a doc and I also grabbed all of my images. I numbered and named them according to the events that I want to sync them up with. And I put those all in that folder as well. Okay, and I'll show you what we're gonna do here in a little bit. 
Um, after we go through the steps, we'll go through actual uh, the actual walkthrough, the actual process of this, um, of what we're going to need to do to make sure that those images and everything are going to behave correctly within the template. Um, I'd have to go back and look at the, their walkthrough, but I'm not sure. I don't think on their uh, guide that's written out, it mentions images in your Google Drive. I think it, me it mentions a couple other places for image storage, but we are going to be able to use the ones in our drive, and that's what I recommend doing with your kids, okay? All right, so we are going to, once we have um, our image folder or folders, but however you're going to organize it set up, we're going to share those folders or folder as anyone with the link can view, not edit, right? And that's going to be the same thing with our spreadsheet here in a little bit. Anyone with the link can view. And that's just going to make it so that when your timeline's published, you're not going to have any dead image links, right? Everything's going to show up the way you want. Otherwise, your Google permissions are going to override that spreadsheet code and you're not going to be able to view those images, unfortunately. All right. Next step, add events and image links to the template. Super easy. If you have everything already set up, copy and paste. If you are organizing as you went, you probably already did this, right, as you were researching. So you're going to put your content into that template. Now, this next couple steps, these next couple steps, this is where you're probably going to be doing some things that you maybe don't normally do with your Google um, with your Google Docs and Sheets, et cetera. We're going to be publishing the sheet to the web. And what that's going to do is, essentially, it's almost like turning that spreadsheet into a web page of sorts. Everything's published, okay? Um, you are going to be able to select if you want your published uh, spreadsheet to automatically update as additional content is added, which we do so that we can continue to add to our timeline without having to go back and forth and publish over and over again. Okay, so you're going to be able to do that. Um, and that's going to give us two different things once it's published. They're going to give us a couple options, a, a link to that publish sheet and also an embed code to the publish sheet if you wanted to embed it. Okay. And that I should mention before I go on to step seven, you can do this with the docs and um, slides and all of your other Google content as well. You can publish those to the web as well. So if you wanted to um, create like a flyer or something informative and you didn't really wanna share it as a doc and you wanted it to auto update still, you could absolutely publish a Google Doc to the web. That's just one of those options. It's been around pretty much since Google Drive and Google Docs started um, and it was a very popular feature when that first came out. I think a lot of people have kind of forgotten about it as new features have rolled out, but it can still be really useful for some things. All right, so once we have that published um, spreadsheet link, we've published it to the web, we're going to grab the link and we're going to grab that link and we're going to take it to Timeline.js's site. They are going to have a field that we are going to paste that link into and that is going to generate our timeline, okay? And then we'll have the option to either share it via link or embed our timeline if you had a website um, or you had an LMS that allowed for embedding or anything like that you would be able to share your content, okay? So I'm hoping no one's overwhelmed at this point. Um, I know when this first came out and I was looking at this, this has been years ago, I was like, man, I feel like this is a little, a little overwhelming, right? It's, it's definitely not exactly plug and play, it's close, but there's a couple extra steps there. I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. This is one of those things where that little extra work is going to be worth it for the end result that we're going to get. And once you've done it a couple of times, you're not even going to have to think about it. It's going to be old hat. And they have a lot of really helpful information on Timeline.js' site that's going to walk you through the process as well. So even if you don't have me there telling you what to do, it's still going to have a guide and everything to kind of hold your hand through the process. So. There are some tips that Timeline.js' 
going to mention as far as creating um, nice quality timelines. One thing that you want to do, and I'm going to get out of the way, so I'm not covering this up. One thing that you want to try to do is um, not get bogged down with every single event. You want to pick those events that are really necessary to tell the story that you're going to tell with your timeline. You don't want your timeline to be so crowded that it is um, visually too busy to even read. So they recommend trying to keep it to 20 points or less on your timeline. Now, I know that there's going to be some times where that doesn't seem feasible. And of course, there may be instances where it makes sense to have additional points, to have more on there, just because that's necessary for the topic at hand. Um, but remember, you also have the option of making multiple timelines. If you are spanning a broad range of time and it can be broken down into different um, sections or eras or something like that, that's another option to break it down into multiple timelines, okay? They also recommend trying to pick something that has a really strong uh, chronological <laughs> sequence, right? If you're telling a story where you're jumping around a lot and you're going back and forth, the timeline might not be the best story uh, or best um, usage for that best method <laughs> to narrate that tale. Okay, so you want something that's very sequential for this particular um, method. Okay, jumping around is not great in a timeline. It's very confusing. Okay, so you and you do want to be telling a story. It's more engaging when there's a really clear narrative for your timeline. You want to choose the points that one are going to be interesting, engaging, but in engaging, but two, do tell that story in a way that people can find, fo follow along, excuse me, follow along and um, see and make those connections, right? And to go along with that, sometimes you got to dig deeper with these timelines to make them make sense and to tell that narrative. So um, it's very tempting to only focus on those big, important, major events, but sometimes it's also really necessary to include some of the events leading up to that so that there is a little background knowledge, there's a little anticipation of what's going to come. And it's always interesting to know what led up to this big event, right? We have these big historical events. It's always really interesting to understand how those came about. So just some things to kind of um, keep in mind. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to head over to Timeline JS. I have done a couple of things already in preparation for this because this is how my workflow would be. So I went ahead and I, like I said, I just grabbed some stuff off the web. You would obviously um, be citing all of your stuff and keeping everything together. But for today's purpose, we're just talking about how to put it in the timeline. So I have a doc here. With a couple points, we're going to do some origins of the Beatles today. Got any Beatles fans in here with me? And I've gathered images for each of those points. Do you have to have an image for each point? No, but it definitely makes it more dynamic, right? Visuals are always um, helpful for those people that uh, find visuals helpful. I get. I don't know. You know, I for me, I'm a very visual person, so. I always try to include images, but there may be times that you don't need it or you have um, some events that are kind of close together and you have an image that really kind of tells the story for both of those points, then by all means, don't worry about using them. Okay, so I've got that together and I'm ready to start creating my timeline. I have my folder here with everything I need and I'm gonna make sure that it is shared appropriately. So I'm gonna go up here to the title of the folder, the name of the folder and click share. I'm going to, have to get link and make sure it's anyone with the link can view. I'm not going to need to copy that link right now because I don't need that link. I'm going to need the links of individual photos in here. So I'm going to leave this open, um, this folder open over here, and then I'm going to go to timeline and I'm going to click get the spreadsheet template. And I'm going to choose make a copy. Once I make a copy, that's my copy. Okay. You're going to notice there's some content in here already if you wanted to kind of try out the final steps and see what this is going to look like. 
You could absolutely do that. I'm not, I'm going to remove most of this content here. Okay. Um, but I want to point out a couple things while we're in here. Okay. One, I think I already said this, but just make sure you're not changing any of your columns. Don't change them. Don't change your names. Don't delete them. Just leave them be. It's all set up. It's going to work great. Okay. You're going to notice here this blue row. This is going to be kind of our cover, right? This is going to be our row that has our sort of cover image in it. So you're noticing that there aren't any dates here. Okay. There aren't any dates here. So I'm going to just leave that <laughs> um, blue and I'm not going to add dates when I add uh, my information, but I am going to put an image and some text in there so that I have a nice kind of cover beginning to my um, timeline. And I'm going to choose from this drop down here title. They have titles and eras. And you will see that there's a couple like advanced maneuvers that you're going to be able to do here in Timeline JS. Um, so if you want to get into that, there's some great videos online. Um, on in YouTube to let's kind of talk about that further. Okay, you're also going to see over here that you can create groups and you can set background. So you can set your background to a specific image. You can also set your background to a specific color. So you see there's a link here where it's set to an image and then this previous event has this hex code. So it's got a very specific color background. So if you go in and you've got it published and you've got your timeline generated and you're like, this isn't really working on this particular event. I need something behind it or this color that's behind it's not working. You can always come in and adjust that. Okay, so I'm ready to go. I've got, I've got my events. I've got my images, everything shared appropriately. I'm set up, I'm ready to go. Okay, again, whatever workflow works for you. For me, I like to get everything out ahead of time the same way. <laughs> that I cook, I like to get all my ingredients out ahead of time and then put it all together. Other people like to go and grab what they need as they need it. If you're that person and you want to put content in the spreadsheet as you research, if you feel like that maybe is making less work for yourself, maybe it does, I don't know. <laughs> um, by all means do that. Also, keep in mind, once you have made your copy here, so I have a, my own copy of the template, it's going to now reside in my drive, it's mine, I can assign that in Google Classroom. So if you're going to do this with your kids, go to Timeline JS, get your copy, and then assign that template in Google Classroom and make a copy for each student. That's going to enable you to do a couple of things. One, if you wanted to put some stuff in here, for them to get started with. You could do that before you make their copy. Um, two, it's gonna allow you to pop in throughout this project and kind of take a peek at what's going on in their timelines. And it's also gonna let you easily be able to have access to the timeline um, to help them out if they need it, okay? You could also, if you wanted them keeping a doc with all of their notes, assign that too. Right, put it all in the assignment. You can attach more than one thing to a Google Classroom assignment. Just go ahead and do that, okay? All right, so what we're going to do at this point is I'm gonna replace some of this information that's here. Now, I, you may have noticed I had lots of pictures. I've, lot, I've got several um, points on my timeline or for my timeline. I'm not gonna make you watch me <laughs> make all of that, but I am gonna put some content in here so you can kind of, um, get a feel for it. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to move my tab over here. All right, give it a title for me. And then I'm going to give this as headline. Origins of the Beatles. History of the, that needs to be capitalized. Before they were the Beatles. Okay, 
And then I think need some media here. So I'm going to go and I'm going to grab the picture that I want. I'm going to right click on it and choose get link. I'm going to copy that link and come back to my spreadsheet and replace what's here with that link. There is a spot for media credit here, which I love former librarian. I would definitely have my kids do that. That is one thing that um, so often people don't do or forget about is giving that, that media credit. So you can give a media credit if you have it. Um, and you can also include media captions and thumbnails. All right. So now I'm ready to add a couple of points with some dates. You're going to notice here that you have um, month and date and then an end month and date. So you are able to create blocks of time here. So if you have one date, you're going to put that same date in both start and end. And if you have a range, obviously it's going to be start and end. All right. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to say March of 1957. And I don't have a day. I'm just going to do March 1st for the sake of this. Seven. One. Okay. Say the Quarryman headline. I'll put the Quarryman. <laughs> are formed and I'm going to grab my picture. I would probably, you know, put more content in there, but I don't want to make you all watch me. <laughs> watch me do that. Right. We'll put Liverpool. Corey men perform John Lennon as the front man. Okay. Make sure there's nothing else over here. I'll get rid of that background and then we're ready to add another one. All right. So let's go over here. I'm going to do July 6 to 57. John and Paul meet for the first time. So 1957, I see that I Okay. Missed something there, right? <laughs> uh, John and Paul first meet. I'm just going to type a little bit more. <laughs> John Lennon and Paul. McCartney meet for the first time at a Corryman performance. Right, I'm going to grab it again. We just keep going. I think we're going to use this. Copy. Okay. All right. So you can see it's it's not too terrible <laughs> to put it in there. And remember, this is great because one, your kids are not going to need timeline JS logins. They're not going to need special accounts for this. Okay. Two, we're going to be using Google Drive, which they very well may be familiar with. Okay. Um, to organize their content. Three, we're gonna be using Google Sheets, which if they're not familiar with, this is a great introduction to it. And then four, you're gonna be able to assign this template in Google Classroom so you can monitor their work as they build their timelines, okay? All right, so hopefully you are all still with me. I'm not worrying about a media caption for this other one. So at this point, what we need to do is we need to publish this spreadsheet to the web. Okay, so I'm gonna go up to, actually, I'm gonna share this just to make sure. Um, and I'm gonna change it to anyone with the link, can view, not edit. We don't want anyone editing our spreadsheet. 
okay? Anyone with the link can view. And then to publish to the web, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to file and we are going to choose share. It used to be right here. So if you were looking for it and you're like, oh, they got rid of publish to the web. It's actually under share in the file menu now. Go over to publish to the web. Okay, so I'm going to do the entire document and I'm going to publish it as a web page. And down here below, there's a little drop down menu where you can choose entire document um, and then automatically republish when changes are made. That's what I want. Um, now, if you had this published and you were going to continue working on it and you didn't want anyone to see what you were working on until you were ready, then uncheck that box and it will just publish. It the way it is when you click the button and no updates will be shown until you come back and publish it again, okay? I'm gonna leave it checked and I'm gonna click publish. Yes. And I just wanna make sure I wasn't supposed to select, yes, entire document, okay. I wanna make sure I wasn't supposed to select just that one um, sheet in our workbook here, okay. So we've got it published under share, published to the web. We're going to publish entire document. I've got it set down here to automatically republish when changes are made. We're gonna close that up and then we're gonna grab this link up here in the URL bar. So don't worry about that publish link. I'm gonna come over here to timeline. And you can see right here in the steps on, Timeline JS's page, they're saying, hey, don't grab this link. Just close that box. You're going to grab the link from the URL bar. And then you're going to come in here. So when you first come in here, you're like, what am I supposed to do with this? And this is one of the things I think where people get lost at this point, because this almost looks like a screenshot. Okay. This is a field for me to put this in. So I'm going to put my URL in here. And then I can choose if I want it full width. And if I want to adjust the height, there are some optional settings where I can change the language. Um, there's different fonts I can choose. Default start size. There's all kinds of things you can do here. And then once you have everything set up, um, it's going to have your link here and in your embed code. And I'm going to open up my preview in the new window. Um, hello. Look how fancy that looks. Now, if I was going to do this again, I think what I would do is I would use that image as a background. I think that looked really nice when they had the um, women in computing timeline that was on their page, how it looked like a really nice cover. So I might modify that. In fact, I might even just go do that now. And grab that. We're just going to use the same picture just to see how it looks. Okay, and close that out. It may take a minute for it to publish. And you can always go into share just to force that publish. Um, you can do stop publishing, okay? And start publishing again if you wanna force it out. All right, and then I would grab this URL. It should be the same URL. You shouldn't have to replace the URL at all. But I'm just gonna grab it. And I'm going to hit preview. It looks like that picture is not going to work for me. We'll try it again later. Okay. All right. So I have here my title. You can see this was the, let's see, let's compare this, what we're seeing here. So our headline is right here. And then beneath that, that is going to be text. And then media obviously is the picture right there. And then I have my navigation arrows here. So I have, I'm covering a pretty small span of time, okay, in this instance. So it's just showing me like March, right? I'm just seeing a lot of March and then um, I'll see July when we head over to July. But as you add more content, it's going to adjust how this appears, okay? 
And I love this because um, it just looks really nice. It looks really nice and professional. I'm able, like I said, to embed this into my website, whatever I want to do with it. And it even gives you, this is kind of cool. If you look over here, when I hover, it's actually giving me a preview of what's coming up next, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so you can kind of see it. So it looks like I made this really cool thing. I, <laughs> it looks like I coded it or I used some really uh, fancy tool and it really was just the spreadsheet, right? It was a spreadsheet and some links. So um, we were able to make some really nice stuff. And yes, it does show color as well. All of my pictures so far are black and white. And there are some tools down there to zoom in. Your timeline are out which I like if I wanted to be able to see more of my points here. Okay, and I can drag it, it's totally interactive. Um, like I said, you can include other media, you can include videos in here, you can include images. Um, you can drag the timeline, you can zoom it in and out. You're gonna be able to go from spot to spot, event to event. You can pop your pictures out into a, another window if you wanna see the picture larger. But that's really it. So once you have it the way you want, um, this is all you need. Now, you'll want to keep track of your timeline links, right? So if you have the kids, you're going to want them to be submitting that link to you when they turn it in. Timeline JS, because we don't have timeline accounts, we're not logging in here, they're not keeping track of this. So you'll want to keep track of your timelines. Now, of course, you're going to have your spreadsheet. You could always come back and put it back in. But um, just to save yourself, again, I taught middle school, save yourself a little, a little headache and to save your kids some heartache when they can't find their link and kind of have a little panic moment. Just have them put it into, um, into that assignment that you assign them or have them keep track of that link. Maybe they'll bookmark it. It would be a great time to... <laughs> go over bookmarking, organizing your bookmarks in Chrome as well. So we have some, some tech extensions here that we like. Okay, everyone. So at this point, I think it might be helpful before we completely wrap things up to take a look at the process that we would go through to assign this in Classroom. I've talked about it a little bit. Um, but just so we can see what that's going to look like both for you as the teacher and for your students. So I'm on Timeline JS's website. I have clicked on the green Make a Timeline button that's going to shoot me down here, and I'm ready to grab our template. So I'm going to click on the Get the Spreadsheet Template button and make a copy just like we did earlier. Okay. And now I have some decisions I need to make here. So the first decision is, am I going to leave this content in here for my kids to deal with or not? I am going to say that I probably would have gone over this with my students already. Um, this isn't really something that I would just throw them into and let them either sink or swim, right? So we would have gone over this. Maybe we would have built one together where I gave each person a row and a date and we built one together. Or maybe I did a walkthrough for them or had them um, watch the, excuse me, had them watch the walkthrough video from Timeline JS. Any of those things um, I might have done prior to assigning this and having them work on this on their own. So I'm going to say I probably would not leave this in here. It's really um, just more of a headache for them to have to clear this all out. So I'm going to take care of that ahead of time. Okay, so you have some options here. You can, I'm going to click on two and hold my shift key and click on four to select the whole row. You can either just hit delete to clear it out or you can actually remove the rows, okay? Um, so I could delete rows two through four if I wanted to do that, and that gives me a really clean place to start. Remember, you never want to modify or remove any of the columns. I'm, I'm changing rows, not a big deal. I do not want to modify or change any of those columns. That's going to end up with me um, 
not having the result I want, things not working correctly. Okay, so at this point I have um, six rows and that really only leaves me five points for my timeline. And that's probably not going to be enough. So I would imagine I would have some sort of rubric set up for my kids instructions and I'm probably going to give them a minimum number of um, points that I want them to add to this timeline. So what I'm going to do down here I see add 1000 more rows which is maybe a little excessive. You could add a thousand more rows and it would not be any kind of big deal but that might be a little much. Um, so let's say right now I have five. I told my kids they have to have a minimum of um, 10 Maybe I'm going to add 10 more rows. So if I have some kids that have some extra points, they just had to include to tell their narrative, um, to thoroughly communicate what was going on for their timeline. I want to make it so that they can um, tell their story and they have enough space to do that. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to change this 1,000 to 10, and I'm going to click Add. Um, so now we have a couple things you can or cannot take care of. It's really up to you. For me, I really like the look of it when we first come in there where everything has the alternating colors because as you can see right now, uh, grid lines are turned off and it's kind of hard to see where I am and what I'm doing. Um, also, I liked how this was breaking things up over here, these lines. So I'm going to walk you through how to set this up. If, um, if you are a spreadsheet novice, these are great skills to know how to do and if you already know how to do this on spreadsheets well then it's going to be super easy for you to set this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up so that we have alternating colors here because it really makes it a lot easier for your kids to be able to track across the screen. Okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click I'm not going to click in the cell here because I want this to apply to the whole row. So I'm going to click on where it says two, and then I'm going to hold down my shift key just like we did earlier when we deleted those rows. And I'm going to hold down shift and click 16, and then I'm going to go up to format because we are formatting the color of our cells. And I'm going to go down to alternating colors. I'm going to leave it gray, but you could change the color at this point. I'm going to uncheck header, okay? Um, I'm just going to uncheck that and then that looks really good. Okay, so once we have that looking the way we want, I'm going to say done and now we have these nice alternating colors. If you wanted to at this point, you could select row two and you could fill it with a different color since that is going to be our um, where our kind of cover is. Uh, the very first point kind of gives our title and an introduction to our timeline, so it does need to kind of stand out a little bit, needs to have some nice information, um, should be marked as title, right? So if you wanted to change that to a different color just so it stands out, so there's a nice visual cue there for your students to um, remind them that they uh, need to have, have a title and this is an important thing, then you can do that by all means. So at this point in time, um, I am going to select these guys right here. Okay, and I'm going to add this line back in because I think that is a nice um, thing to have just to break things up visually. So what we're really doing here is adding a border to the cell and I want to add it to just the right side of the cell. So I've got my cells selected that I want this to apply to. And then I'm going to go up here to this little grid icon. When you hover over it, you're going to see it says borders. And I'm going to choose the one that just has a right border. Okay, and now our line is back. And then I'm going to go through here and I'm going to do kind of the same thing. For this one, I'm selecting my cells. And I'm going to choose left and right. Um, and then over here, let's see, I'm just going to choose right border and so on and so forth. So nothing magical here, nothing too crazy. Let's see, if 
over here, make sure everything looks the way I want it to look. I do want to show you something um, that we didn't look at before. If you notice these, these little tabs here, um, they have a little notch on them. It kind of makes them look like file folder tabs, but those are actually little comments. So you can see here for this, the year is actually required except for if you select title as the type. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, so your title does not need to have a year because it's kind of the cover. And then a lot of these just say that they're optional. I have to click off to get them to go away. So a lot of these are optional. End year is optional. End month is optional. All of this is optional. Display date. This is going to override Timeline JS date formatting and displays the contents of the cell instead. So however you wanted the date displayed, even if you put something else over here, it's going to do that. Um, so you can kind of see a lot of this is optional. Let's just kind of go through here. Uh, it's telling us where we can link all of our different images from our media credits, captions. I always think it's good. Look, link to an image file no larger than 32 by 32. So that would be a little tiny square. Um, you can always resize those. Okay, indicates which slide is the title slide. So that if you had the title slide down here for some reason, I would probably move it by clicking and dragging my row. But it's going to tell you which slide is the title slide. It says you can set era slides. Um, it's not going to show you um, any of the media though. So the era, you can add this era range and it will show. Um, your information, but it doesn't display any media because it's almost like creating that that era and everything underneath that's going to exist within the era. And then you can also show groups and show how they are um, events are related, which is nice, especially if you're working in a complex timeline or if you were doing um, something like. I don't know, like the Civil War, and I had some things that pertain to the North and some things that pertain to the South. I would be able to create those groups, and then of course our background. Um, that's going to be the uh, slide background color. So you can do a hex um, value or an image URL there. I will tell you, this has been a little hit and miss for me, and you saw that earlier when we tried to do it. Sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't with images. But those hex values do work really well. Um, if you are looking for a specific color, you can literally just Google hex code for blue or hex code for this. Um, the other thing that I like to do if you're working with things and you want the colors to kind of jive really well together, and this is a total sidebar. You do not have to do this, um, but if you're like me <laughs> and you have some, some tendencies toward uh, needing everything to match, this is something you might want to look into. A, um, I would recommend an eyedropper extension if you're using Chrome. Um, the one I use is just called eyedropper. Um, so if you go to the Chrome Web Store, there we go, and you put in eyedropper, there's actually a couple. I know, I told you it was a sidebar, right? I would recommend one that has a good number of reviews. This is the one I use. And yes, the icon looks old and maybe not that modern, but it works great. I use it all the time. And then if you were trying to get something, a color from somewhere, you just can click on your eyedropper and choose pick color from web page. You hover over it, click, and now it's blue up there and I can grab that hex value. It says lavender, which I disagree with. I can copy and paste that and put it into my background here. So if you wanted um, to utilize some colors and you're not that familiar with hex values, the eyedropper can be really helpful finding the right color. Okay, so at this point, it looks pretty good. I might um, go ahead maybe and change my type to title here for my kids and for the headline, I would say type your timeline title here. 
just to give them some prompts. Maybe if you're all doing kind of a similar timeline and you wanted to give them the first thing that should be included on there, uh, you could. Like you could have this be um, something where you give them the first couple things. You could even have this be sort of a guided notes sort of activity where you're putting in some information they have to go figure out the month and day and the end year and the end day, all that stuff and they have to go in and add media. So it's totally up to you. Okay, so at this point we have everything set up the way we want. I'm going to go up here and I am going to make sure I give it a name. I'm just going to call it Social Studies Timeline Template. Okay, and I'm ready to go. So I'm going to open up a new tab and head over to my Google Classroom. And once that loads, I'm going to select the class I want to assign my timeline for. So let's do got a lot of classes here. Let's do our seventh grade social studies class. And we're going to be hopping into Shaggy's work here in just a minute. I'm going to click on classwork and choose create. And of course this is a demo class so please don't judge my topics and lack of organization. I'm going to click on assignment and I'm going to type in historical timeline assignment and I would obviously type my instructions and then at this point we need to talk about or decide what all we want to attach to this. So we definitely want to attach our um, spreadsheet. I'm going to go to my drive and that should come up in my recents because I just used it. Okay. All right, and this is where I would want to make a copy for each student. Now, if you were doing that like initial, initial, uh, initial foundational activity, um, where maybe we're building a timeline together and each student has an event and I have them, um, I'm going to have everybody come in, then I could do the same process and make it so everybody can edit and we can all go in there together. Um, but in this case, I'm going to make a copy for each student. And then I need to decide if I want to add anything else. You know, maybe I have a um, doc that I've set up for them to keep track of their research or an additional spreadsheet. That might be a little much, but an additional research spreadsheet. Or perhaps I'm going to let them figure out how they want to work through this on their own. Either way is fine. You could absolutely attach just this. You could also consider, let's see we can go through timeline JS's um, excuse me they have this nice grab this link here to this Vimeo video um, they have a nice walkthrough right here on Vimeo so assuming Vimeo isn't blocked for you all you could also add the link to that Vimeo walkthrough from timeline JS so if kids need to do a refresh, oh, it's going to ask me to verify. That's kind of silly. Um, oh, no, I think it's going to work. I think it's going to work just fine. <laughs> um, sorry. So anyway, so you could attach that Vimeo walkthrough video that it says verify to continue, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be fine. Um, you could create your own walkthrough for the kids specific to this assignment using something like Screencastify or Screencast-O-Matic. Um, those are free if you're making a short video, which should be a pretty short video. Um, or you can go into YouTube. There's lots of short walkthroughs on YouTube that maybe not all of your kids are going to need, but some of them might want that, especially if they're going home and working on their assignment and finding that they've forgotten something or something's not working quite the way they expected it to, right? Okay, so let's see. We have our template we're making a copy of. We have a reference video for our kids. I would have obviously type instructions. I am going to, I'm just not going to give it a topic so it's right at the top for Shaggy. And then we can adjust our point values. This is probably going to be a pretty big assignment. And our due date. We'll give our kiddos a while to work on this. Um, oops, no topic. 
my category. You could create a rubric for that if you wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and assign. And this is going to be really nice for me um, and the kids because, again, I'm going to be able to kind of monitor this. So let's go over to Shaggy. It's always nice to see what things look like from our kids' point of view, right? And he's going to head into his classroom as well. Okay. And... Here is that class that we were just in. It's not showing up or that the no work due soon because I gave them over a week to do this, but it's there. So I'm going to click on classwork and there's our assignment. Let's go ahead and click on that. And I do want to see, look, it popped right up. I, I wish it was giving them a preview. So if you use that Vimeo link, you will have to tell them, hey, this is a... Um, this is going to work if you click on it. Honestly, just me personally, I'd probably go find a YouTube one that's going to show up nicely because I know that some kids are going to look at this and think that it's not something they need or something that's useful to them. So um, attach a link of a nice walkthrough video just for a reference for your kiddos. And then I'm going to open up Shaggy's. Yeah. All right, and he is going to type some things here. Okay, and he would go in and add some stuff. grab some images, right? I'm going to, and at this point, I'm going to throw this in his drive. You could also walk through, through the process of setting up their folders and everything. And also, sorry, that didn't show up. <laughs> drive at google.com. Um, also, this could be a nice time if you have um, a tech integrationist, you have a media specialist, you have a technology teacher who is there to help support you. This would be a really nice project to bring some people in on to really help you make these things dynamic and to help you with um, creating and help your kids create these really nice full scooby doo in here. All of these really nice um, products. So let's make sure this is shared. Anyone with the link can view. Okay, done. Oh, and I should have just copied that link, but we're going to get the link and copy the link. Okay. And then I'm going to put that in here over under media. And this is going to be a title because I already set that for my kids. All right. Very good. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. All right. Okay, so Shaggy is going to put in some more information. You do have to have a date included. All right, so let's see. I know we really needed this. Um, let's just get some pictures. Nineteen sixty-nine. You know what? I wasn't that off. <laughs> okay, so let's grab some pictures, so we have some things to work with. a couple here. All 
Right. And I'm going to have Shaggy put these in. At this point, I think we'll have a new folder here. It's just going to make things easier for him. I probably would have had them um, do this ahead of time. It's just going to make it easier for them because they're not going to have to sh set up sharing settings for every single item, right? Okay. All right, so let's grab. I'm going to grab some links here. Shaggy needs to have a couple events. Okay. And let's grab another one. Grab my link. Okay. Um, just add a couple more. I know you all wanted to watch me do this, right? Shame you said it is. Okay, and I'll add one more. putting random dates. Okay. Oops. Put that in there. Okay, so he's got some stuff now. So he is going to go up to File, Share, and Publish to the Web. And of course, we would have um, made sure that our kids know what they're doing here. I gotta zoom out so I can stop publishing and publish again just so I can make sure I'm forcing that publish and I'm going to get out of here and so maybe you got really tiny copy this URL okay and we are going to put this in Preview this. There's my timeline. There's my purple that I grabbed with our um, our hex code. So whatever size your image is here, uh, it will fill as much as it can. So that was a pretty small image. If it had been larger, it would have filled as much as it could. You can kind of see the aspect ratio here. So if you have a thinner photo, it'll go across and you'll have some of this gray. Um, so just keep that in mind. So now Shaggy has a bad link, lovely, bad photo. I'll have to check on that in a little bit. Maybe my link was got wonky. Um, yeah, so he knows it's good to go. He's seen a preview, and I like that for my kids, too, because there's a sense of confidence there. So at this point, I want my kids to grab this link and come back to their classwork. It's going to open his assignment and click add or create. That might be new for some of your kids if they're normally just working in something that you have created an attachment for. He's going to choose link and he's going to paste it in there and he's going to add his link to that. It's going to take a moment and look it's even got a preview and he can turn that in. Okay. Alright so Shaggy's got his work all turned in here. I as the teacher can open this up. I'm going to see that his is turned in. I can click on it. And a couple things I like here. Um, I can, like I was talking about earlier, I can monitor um, my kids as they work. So I can see Kara probably hasn't done anything on this, right? The Shaggy's is turned in. I love that I can see both his. Um, spreadsheet and I can see his link right here and I have to open that in a new window but that's fine and I can grade it right in there it's wonderful yeah so it's it's really um, a nice assignment to be able to work on I love the idea like I said of assigning a Google Classroom 
and um, being able to hop in and out of any of their spreadsheets because that's where they're going to run into issues um, is with the spreadsheet. They're not going to have too much trouble hopefully finding their images and putting them into their drive. Um, so where they're going to probably need help is in that spreadsheet getting things set up the, the way that they want them set up. So the great opportunity to work through kids on lots of different skills here, right? So we are doing online research. We are gathering, um, saving photos. We are creating a folder in our drive. We are uploading content into a folder. We are adjusting sharing settings. We are working in a spreadsheet. We are um, creating this really cool timeline. So they're getting to do a lot of different things within this one assignment that's going to reinforce some of those tech skills that are really great for our kids to have. And I think this could be a really fun assignment. And a lot of your kids are really going to enjoy this because they are making such a nice final product. Okay, and that's it. So like I said, this is one of those tools when you first come in, it can feel a little overwhelming. It can feel a little daunting, but it's actually pretty simple to use. And like I said, all of that work and maybe that little bit of overwhelm in the beginning is absolutely worth it for that beautiful final product. Here's my embed preview down here as well, where I can see it. it just looks really, really nice, much nicer than some of the things that I, uh, I may have made in the past online using some other tools. So definitely check it out. I'm going to put my contact information back up on here again. Um, if you have any questions or if you make a really cool timeline and you'd like to show it to me, cause I would love to see it. That would be awesome. Or if you have your kids make some timelines, we would love to see those. Um, but again, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at Corinne at soida.org and I'd be happy to answer those. Thanks so much for joining me in this session and we'll see you next time. Thank you.